hi guys and welcome back to a brand new piercing disaster horror story video girls welcome 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 back to the channel what is the tea what is the darjeeling the lapsang sushon the scalding cot assam the el grey what's the tea hi one welcome back to the channel yes hello 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 how are you all doing what what's going on in your life what what's going on I keep wanting to redo my intro over and over again. So I've not done a video where I read out your own personal terrible piercing experiences. It's been such a long time, so do apologize. Comment down below your own stories, anything might have gone bad. And if this video does well, I will continue and carry on making them going forward. Also today we are here to do another little sort of like piercing change video. Now I have a lot of new Halloween style jewelry here. Yes, yeah, so Alpha Body Jewelry is a sponsor of this video and they've been sponsoring me now for about a year. So I really appreciate the continued support. They've released all of their new Halloween jewelry for this year. As you can see, I am already wearing a lot of black jewelry already. So we're going to be doing this one a little bit differently. I'm going to be changing some of them, but I've also got some other things. I've got, there's a lot like septum nose jewelry as well that I want to show you. And some other pieces of jewelry that we're going to do like a little bit of a showcase of different types of piercing jewelry and not just necessarily what I'm using. So you can see a little bit more variety. And of course, if you would like to get anything you see in this video, you can click in the link in the description box, go to Alpha Body Jewelry, and you can use my code Roly. 30 for 30% off your order. And I want to stress as well, it goes on everything in the site as well, not just what I'm showing in this video. So if you do go to the website and you happen to see other stuff you like, not just the Halloween things, you can also use my code ROLY30 to get 30% off everything. But as always, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe. There's a QR code on the screen if you're watching on TV. Scan it, subscribe to the channel. And yeah, tell me, tell me some of your own personal piercing disasters down below in the comment section. But without all that being said, Let's not beat around the bush watelier and get on with these piercings gone wrong. Stories. Ugh. So this is from Mr. Steal Your Girl and they said, I got my tragus pierced in April and I have psoriasis so my immune system flares up. I ended up having swollen lymph nodes for weeks and all of a sudden I had a horrible earache. I was convinced I had a piercing infection. Turns out I have gotten mono. <laughs> mono? What? You got mono? No, uh, mono? D mono? Mono, don't! The last thing I was really expecting at the story at the beginning was mono. I have got mono. I still have no idea how I got mono, but I believe I had the virus already in my system and getting a piercing triggered it somehow. I just added in a word there. I still have my piercing. About a week or two ago, I had... Uh, I had pain, I had a pain cleaning it. It was swollen, but I had some healing juice and blood coming. Healing juice? Juice. Oh, juicy, woosy guys. I had some healing juice and blood coming out. And now it's back to its original size. Also lovely videos. Thank you. And of course, I hope your ear is fine now. This is a year ago, because obviously it's been such a long time since I've done one of these videos. So uh, hopefully your, uh, your ear is okay. Mono! You dirty bitch! So I'm going to be keeping my tunnels in my ear just because it's the right color. But what I'm going to do is change the jangly one that I have in my hoop. I'm just going to take this out here, start on my left side, and we put that out there. And we're going to put this little hoop here. So there's a little, lovely little gorgeous hoop here where, so it's like a hoop, but the gem is on the outside. So it's like an orange and black kind of colored gem on the outside. Very pumpkin, it's very sort of like pumpkin spice. So I'm going to pop this one into here. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, I love it. Perfect. There we go. It looks great. What I really like about these ones is the fact that the gem's on the outside, so you can actually see it when you're looking forward. So many piercing jewelry and stuff, obviously, it really is sort of like on the top, so all the gems are kind of like sticking out the top. This one, because it's like on, it's like on the outs, on the, or sort of like the edge of it, so you can actually see it when you're looking forward, which I really like. So next, I do have this lovely piece of jewelry. Now, this is actually a nipple jewelry, and it is got, it's like a bat with a dangly gem on the front of it. Of course, I will do some nice close-ups so you can see. Of course, I don't have my nipples pierced anymore, but I did get this for a specific reason, because I'm being a bit cheeky. Cheeky, cheeky. As I said about this one having the gem on the front, so it points out, these ones also have the gems on the front, which means I'm gonna change the bottom half. So I've got spikes up here. I'm gonna change the bottom half into a gem, because at the moment it's just like two spikes sort of like up and down. But what I wanna do is change a gem on the bottom half so the red gem faces outwards. So when you look at me, you can see a red gem. So many times this happens and you just end up seeing the gem underneath and you kind of lose what it's meant to look like. I'm always thinking of new ways to do it, girls. I'm always asked to use a side camera when I use these, but I mean, I still don't think you can really see that much compared to normal afters. Of course, as always, I will I will do like a nice end photo of my ears. You'll be able to see them properly. And with the, some of the septum piercing jewelry, I will also put in some photos as I'm doing it so you can actually see what the jewelry looks like as I'm going. So this story comes from Jerry and they say, 
piercing horror story. When I got my first triangle VCH pierced, which is the hooing girls, not a pussy, I didn't go to my usual piercer, but to one who specifically listed triangles in their piercings he does, because I wanted someone who was experienced in this kind of piercing, and that makes absolutely sense. When you're dealing with your genitals, you want to make sure you're going to someone who actually knows what they're doing. We decided to do the triangle first. He used a 2mm, 2mm, 12 gauge, externally threaded horseshoe bar with a 1.6mm thread. For this, so the thread was a bit smaller than the bar itself, creating an additional edge. No, I don't think I've ever seen a bar that's like that with two different sizes. So after the needle went through, he put in the horseshoe bar, but without screwing on the first ball previously. Oh God, so there was no ball attached. So he screwed the first ball on, the other end slipped into my skin. Yeah, why would you, what? He tried to push it out several, to, oh, for several minutes until the right side was so swollen and bruised that it definitely wasn't possible anymore. Oh my God, when you're, oh, so he had to take it out and told me to come back in a month to get it re-pierced. We decided to still do the VCH and somehow he even managed to make placing the needle receiving tube very uncomfortable. God. So the last thing I said, so at last I got that one. He used a straight barbell and didn't mark it beforehand. At first it looked a bit crooked, but I assumed it was just because the very swollen, it was very swollen on the right side. After a few, after a few days when the swelling went down, it started to look even more crooked instead of less. Oh no! So I had to take that one out as well. Months later, I asked my usual piercer if he also does triangle and by any chance. Turns out I could have saved a lot of time and money because he does. So my trusted piercer re-pierced me with the correct jewelry and the ring he used for the triangle is six millimeters bigger than the horseshoe was and fits perfectly. Well, I'm glad that it turned out nice in the end. Yeah, when you start, when you're dealing with like, if I, like your vag girls, you obviously want to make sure you're going to someone right. But I would say trust your instincts to begin with and just ask your piercer to begin with. Yeah, if you, if you're going to someone who is your trusted piercer and you've gone to them for ages, if they haven't stated that they do these types of piercings, just ask them. And if they say no, that's great. As this person's found out, they could have saved a lot of pain and money and energy. Please, if you go, if you go to a regular piercer, if you don't know if they do a specific type of piercing, just ask them. Because most of the time they're probably going to say yes anyway. And they're not going to lie to you. If they can't do something, they won't do it. So please trust your gut. Ask people that you're with and hopefully, uh, you know, situations like this won't happen to you in the future. But thank you for sharing your unstoirage. So going up next, the ear. Now this is technically a belly button bar and it's a lovely jewel heart with bat wings either side and has a little tiny dangly one underneath it. I love this one, it's really, really cute. I'm gonna be putting this in my second, like my sort of low, a higher low, low helix piercings here. I always love to have dangly ones on these ones. So we're gonna change this one over here to now and that one's gonna go into that one. I love me a dangly earring, gang. Well, I wish you wouldn't. Yeah, and I've had a lot of people compliment me recently on my new sort of like piercing look because I changed them all to black. So when we when we first did the Halloween piercing jewelry what, a year ago, obviously last Halloween, uh, um, some of the jewelry because obviously I've got 1.6 piercings, some of them were 1.2, so I wasn't able to keep them all in all the time because of course my my piercing holes would have shrunk. So I had to kind of take them out, and of course I didn't have many 1.6 bars. So then I sourced other piercings that were all black and I was like, do you know what? I want to give the black look one more chance. And I've been totally in love with it now that I redid it black. So I just put the jewelry in here. I absolutely love it. Of course, again, I'll take photos towards the end and stuff, but I put the jewelry in here. I love that. I, I know the technique, but again, I know the telly belly button bars, but I love to have the dangly ones on my ears there. So next we're going to be changing over my Traegus piercing. And this one, I'm going to be pushing this lovely rose. So it's like a rose and it has like a red gem in the middle. I'm going to, I'll try and get a nice close up of it. Obviously these are a little bit tricky to to show on their own with the camera. So just like a gorgeous like silver black rose with a red gem in the middle. So I'm gonna just be point putting this one into my tragus piercing. So I got I got that one in there, which is really cute. That's really sweet. I love that a lot. A nice little ro oh, pussy rose girl. Now, of course, I'm not gonna be changing everything. As I said, because I've got already, like I've got some of their jewelry, like these, a lot of these like uh, red gems and things are all from there anyway. This little skeleton hand here on my ears there. A lot of the piercing that I have is from Alpha. So I'm not gonna be changing absolutely everything. So maybe I'll change this next one up here where the spikes are and we'll change this one too. Now, what do we have here? We've got lots of things here to choose from. Maybe we can put it in the spider. I had the one of the jewelry here is like a little spider. It's very, very, very cute. So let's do, and then if you can see on camera, again, I'll put like a nice close up. We'll do the spider in this one here. Does that fit nicely? Yeah, it does. Nice little spider. So we have the spider in the ear there. I love that. But let's do another story. So the collective haze and go. 
I got my left eyeball pierced Memorial Weekend of 2021 at a reputable piercing shop that I'd previously got my nipples and several tattoos done. Great, clean shop, piercing was perfect, correct jewelry and everything. End of story, a wonderful, lovely piercing story. I got home satisfied with my purchase. At the time, I was working on a construction site. Ooh, we have a man among us. Special man. The, at a construction site as a water truck driver. It is a big diesel truck with 6,000 gallons of a water tank on it. And I go, I would go around and spray the ground where I work. Oh my God, where work was being done for dust control. God, we needed that where I used to fucking live. Jesus Christ. Lived at Wembley Park for ages and there was always construction outside our house. Our outside windows, because of all the dust, it was constantly just like, disgusting and they never sent over air, like window cleaners i need to make an entire video really on my second channel where i talk about the reason we left london one of the reasons why we left that place because that building that we lived in went to utter bollocks why is this relevant you you, you had the big truck full of wood set spraying for dust control about two months after i got my piercing i was turning around in a very bumpy area we can't drive an undisturbed topsoil and the area i turned around on only had six inches of topsoil stripped and piled so it hadn't been leveled yet. I'm halfway through the turn and hit a big bump. I'm thrown violently into my door and piercing smashes direct- oh my god. And my door piercing smashes directly into the window. Oh my god. <gasps> so you, you, you went forward and your eyebrow just like smacked into the door. Oh no! Eyebrow piercings are so delicate because of where it is. Like that's not something you can smack and it be like perfect afterwards. I get the turn finished and throw my truck in a park. Immediately there was blood all over my safety glasses. One of my buddies threw some gauze and tape he got from the first aid kit on, on it. By the time the medic arrived, the bleeding was done. Visibly, there was no trauma on the outside of the piercing. It just decided to bleed on impact. So all the medic did was clean the dried blood off and then the paperwork on the incident. Everybody had to stop and go on safety stand down because of my bleeding eyebrow. Oh God, blood! The embarrassment of the whole thing was worse than the pain endured. It healed up fine though and I still have it today. I am so gasped that you still have that. The fact that you would have done that and like whacked it that hard and it's still fine. Mine was so sensitive that even if I just did this, uh, it was like, oh, but that's it. The world is over. My life is over. It's always one of those piercings that I'm like, I really want back. I want it back. But of course, it won't end well, but I really want it back. Don't be a bastard, give it to me. I really, really, really want to pierce my eyebrow. If you want to pierce my eyebrow, it's going to reject in a year. If I do it with that knowledge, is it okay? No, I don't want it. So a piece of jewelry that I do have here in my hand that I wanted to show you because it's really cool. I won't be able to use it just because I don't have an industrial piercing, but it is an industrial piercing that's loose in the middle and has a lovely spider gem in the center. Now, again, these are really, really, really perfect for people who have industrial piercings that don't have it completely straight or it's adding a little bit of pressure or it's just look, maybe the positioning wasn't amazing. This is one of the perfect types of jewelry to have for a unconventional industrial piercing. Loose in the middle, so it's not pulling, it's not holding your ear in place because everything is completely free. So like if your industrial is like up here and your bottom one's a little weird angle or it's putting a bit of pressure, you can use one of these really cute bars and you can still have like an industrial look of a piercing without actually having to have an industrial piercing properly. But of course I wanted to show this because like I can't get, I can't use it myself because I don't have an industrial piercing. So we're going to change my forward helix piercing. Now, as always, this one's always a bit of a bastard to remove. So hopefully it will come off okay. Unclip, come on, come on, unclip. Bah. So for this one, I have a similar bar to what is in my earlobe here, but it's a silver version and it's a double one. So again, I'll try to give like a nice close up here so you can kind of see it. I'll show like a close up here so you can see it. So I'm going to be putting this onto my forward helix piercing. So let me do this one now. This one is always a pain to change. Come on. It's because it's like this is one of my smaller piercings that I have. So it's always a tricky one to like do. Did I get it in? No, I didn't get it in. Oops, not say. So I have that one in there. I'm not sure if it's clipped from the back. The, again, it's, I think I should have got the size bigger. I think I've got one that's a little bit just too small. I think I should have gone eight. This is a six millimeter. I should have gone eight. I mean, I think it's clipped in. I think it's clipped in. I think it's clipped in. That's my fault though. I should have got the size above the one. I didn't, I, didn't, I, I stupidly got the right, I ordered the wrong, the wrong size. So I've actually changed my mind about something. Now I'm going to take this belly button piercing out here, the one that I have there, and I'm going to change it for 
the slightly more dangly one. Now, what I was going to do is I was going to change this claw one, but because I actually really like that one there, what I'm going to do is put this more dangly one on this side. So this is like a butter, it's like a butterfly, it's like a sort of a, a sort of dying butterfly, black butterfly with some lovely dangly pieces on it. I'm actually going to put this one on this side instead because it dangles a little bit more than that other belly button bar. But I, I mean, I still really like it, but I wanted it to dangle a little bit more. So I'm going to have something really dangly on each side. So let me just pop this one in here. Every single year, like the British public always have like a bit of a meltdown because there's like Christmas stuff out out before Halloween in like shops. However, this is the first time that I have seen Christmas stuff out in September. <laughs> So I have that one on now. I I, I prefer that there better because I like when I look forward. I love being able to see like the dangly, like the dangliness behind me. Oh, dangly wangly girls. I love being able to do this and it's like having a hair flip. I don't have any hair anymore, so I can I can piercing flip. So this is an actually horror story. I saw this comment there in the in the in the comment section. I really wanted to read it just because it made me laugh. I just want to say that seeing your tattoo journey has actually made me want to rewatch The Simpsons. I think the last time I saw an entire episode was at least more than 15 years ago. I'm related, but can we get a Julie collection tour? Well, first of all, that's Thank you. I'm glad that my Simpsons sleeve has made you want to watch more The Simpsons because anything that can encourage people to make more Simpsons viewage, I'm happy. But also, you commented this, uh, can we get a Julie collection tour? Well, I guess I've been making them. This is obviously a year and this is my last piercing horror story video was January of 2023. So it's a long time ago. So it was before I was doing this video. So yes, you can have one. <laughs> so this is from Helling it. Helling it. Helling it is. Hello, anything is? Best horror story I've heard in years. <laughs> Best horror story I have is years ago, but my then boyfriend, now hubby, oh, congratulations, went to get piercings. I wanted my nipples done. He wanted his tongue done. Well, he went first, got his piercing done, all fine, and then when I was standing with my boobies out, getting marked up to make sure it was straight, etc., he passed out. Luckily, he was already sitting down, but the piercer had to abandon me to see him. So I am casually standing there with my bits out for a while. We were in private room, luckily. I still make fun of him to this, to this day. I love the fact that he gets his tongue pierced. It's all fine. You're getting ready to get yours done. And then he passes out. That is hilarious. I can imagine like you would have been like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> You don't have to be mad to work here, but you do have to pass out when your wife's getting her tits pierced. My boobs are too big? So I think that maybe we could do some septum piercing changeovers and show you some different septum piercing jewelry. Take up my septum piercing. I don't normally take this one out, so it always feels a bit weird. I hate, like, uh. It makes me like, there's like a weird thing in the middle. It makes it like, almost like it feels very tickly like I'm gonna sneeze. Hopefully there's no nose hairs. So first of all, I have this really cute death moth and I'm gonna pop this one on here. Now all of these are on hinges. Now, which makes it so much easier to put on and off. So thank thank you, thank you Alpha for making the hinges. I love the hinges ones. They're the easiest ones to just clip on and clip off. It literally, you can just, if you can see it very well, cause we'll get it small. All we have to do is like put it together, give it a little bit of a push and it clicks in. And all you gotta do is just, you just unclick it like that. And there's that one. So this is the death moth. Now my septum piercing is done quite high up. So of course, a piercing side, there are different sizes and everything. So make sure you choose the right size for you. I wasn't too sure what size to get because of course this is a different type of jewelry that I normally would use because I'm so used to using horseshoe bars. I wasn't sure exactly what size to get, but that's really cute. I love it. The uh, death moth. So is that Silence of the Lambs? Is Silence of the Lambs that made the death moth? Is that right? Excuse the close up images of my face. No one wants to see someone that close up anyway. <gasps> I will change this over now for a different one. Let's, let's, let's do another one. So this one is a red bat. So now it's a red bat hanging upside down. So let's pop this one in there, there. Same kind of thing. It's the same size. It's on a little hinge. So let me just pop this one in here. If I can find the hole, there we go. With a septum piercing, does anyone else find getting the hole really tricky? I always struggle to get it back in. Oh, that one's really cute. So this is a, like an upside down bat. I think that one's very cute. That's very, very sweet. I love that. Oh, yeah, I like them actually. They're really cute. I don't normally, like again, I'm so used to having horseshoe bars. I don't normally use other types of, like I never change these. Whenever you watch these videos, I rarely change my septum piercing. I really like that. That's really cute, like an upside down bat. Again, I'll put a photo here so you can see it close up. That's really cute, I love that. Oh, I like that a lot. I just love it because it's like a different, like the red. I love the red out facing, that's really cute. Now this one might be my favorite out of the septum piercing ones and it's this little cute little pumpkin. Oh, it's so sweet. This little tiny, Oh God, I just dropped it. Wait, oh, oh my God, no, they stupid no. things. Oh, thank God. Like, I remember ages ago, we were doing one of these and I, I think it was the one with the, when I was putting the little, I think it was last Halloween actually. And there was a little chili that I put at the top here. It was like a little tiny, like spicy chili. I'll put like a photo here so I can remember it. This was last year's. 
All the stuff that was in last year is still available this year, by the way. So if you're missing the stuff that I got last year, you can also, they, they, they are still selling it this year as well. But I was putting the chili on top and I accidentally dropped it and it went on the floor and I couldn't find it. So I couldn't use what I want. Like I couldn't do what I wanted to do with it. I was so upset because like, it was my stupid place, like dropped it on the floor. This is a really, really cute pumpkin. I always struggle. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I always struggle to find the hole when I'm doing septum piercings. There's something about septum piercing that seems really difficult to find the hole. Come on, where are you? Obviously finding the hole is a little bit difficult, but once it's in, it's so easy to clip on. Like the clip on jewelry, I freaking love. That's really sweet as well. So this is the pumpkin on my nose. That's very cute. The pumpkin. Pumpy wumpy. Pumpkin. Oh yeah, do you like the Halloween? Um, the tea was on the wall as well, as I said before. So it's up against the wall now, which is nice. But Halloween, yeah, pumpkin. Yeah. Uh, the pumpkin king. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. Septum piercings in my face. <laughs> I'm gonna just leave the pumpkin in now while we carry on, just cause I'm gonna do some more on my right ear, but I wanna do another story. So this is from Atri, and they have said, when I was a kid, my right lobe ate the back of my earring. And I remember I found out when I had PE in school and I needed to take the earrings out and I couldn't. And I, God, and of course the teacher didn't believe me. The teacher didn't believe you. Like surely you could be like, um, look, you can see I can't take it out. Where is it? Like the fact they wouldn't believe you is weird. Don't lie to me. I don't miss the days in school that we had to take your piercings out for PE and stuff. Or you put like blue tape over them. Absolutely not. Some girls in my school had so many ear piercings all up their ears and like PE, it just looked stupid because the whole ears, it's like they were wearing like blue headphones the whole time. It was so stupid. So the teacher didn't believe me, but eventually I just ended up doing PE with one earring in. When I went home, I told my mother and she tried to pull it out herself and failing, of course. So we grabbed a bottle of cooking. You grabbed a bottle of cooking oil? Did you fry your ear? Oh, well, we can't take the piercing out. So we're decapitating you and eating you for lunch. Ooh, a feast. Will we be invited? Happy Halloween. So we grabbed a cooking oil and poured it on the back of my ear, which was another failure. And I, and I think at some point we were able to get the earring itself out, just not the back of it. Eventually, I was able to remove the back when I was bathing, bathing later that evening. I think by having my head under water and twisting it, since then, I have been paranoid about the back of my ear getting too, back of my ear being too tight and I've, uh, and I've had the back as far away from my lobe as possible without uh, without it falling off. I couldn't even read the end of that story. I was I was so, the, the, the puzzling of cooking oil, being like, oh, frying tonight. Frying tonight. So now I'm at right side, we're gonna be changing what I have here dangling in my hoop as well. And we're gonna be putting one of the other septum piercing ones in there. So this one, two bat wings with some red jewels dangling from it. It's really, really cute. Here it is here. Two bat wings with uh, like gems dangling from either side of it. Again, it's kind of one of those difficult ones to show. Hopefully you can see it. Can you see it? These can be a little bit tricky. The kind of jewelry can be a little bit tricky, but we shall see what we do. Okay, so I've got that one in the earlobe now. You'll be able to see it better from the side because these ones are slightly, this is technically meant to be like a septum piercing jewelry, but I put it on my ear just because when I take the side view camera, like the shot, the photos, it will, you'll be able to see it better. So face on, you can't see it as much, but I really like it. Funnily enough, I didn't actually have to screw anything out because of my piercing hole, I could just kind of like loop it on without having to take anything off. So so because my Angie Traeger's piercing is always a bit of an annoying one, I'm gonna leave that what's in there now, because again, it fits nicely, but we will be changing the Traeger's piercing like we did on the left side. So let's change that one now. So I'm gonna be putting this little pumpkin into my Traeger's. I love it, it's really, really cute. So let me just pop this one in now. That's very cute. Again, I'll, put, I'll take some close at the end so you can see it properly, but that's very cute. Got the little pumpkin in my ear. I love that, it's very, very cute. Little pumpkin. So I'm gonna be changing my big conch hoops. I'm gonna be changing this to one that's on the inside. So I've got like this really nice, it's like a it's like a, a, a coffin with a red, it's like red coffin with a cross in the middle. Jesus Christ, pierce for Jesus. So yes, it is this red coffin. I love it a lot. So I'm gonna be putting that in the middle. I thought it was fitting because of the size of it. I needed something that kind of fitted like the big space. So this one fits in nicely. If I can undo it. <laughs> So because of where it is, I'm struggling a little bit to get it in because my it, it's just really difficult. It's like kind of difficult jewelry to screw in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it off camera and then I'm gonna take photos. I'll put it in, but I've just put like a different bar in just for now. I'm gonna hide this person's name because of the story. I used to be an assistant manager for Claire's. I can't believe I lasted over a year there. Piercing babies was horrible, but the worst experience I had was piercing a woman's cartilage. I remember right after I did it, she slumped in the chair a little and looked like she was going to pass out. Luckily, she didn't actually 
actually pass out, but she was pretty pale. I had her sit in the chair for quite a while after, so I keep so I could keep an eye on her. Knowing what I know now and how horrible it used to, uh, how horrible it is to use a gun on car cartilage, I'm surprised that I did. <clears throat> I'm surprised it didn't happen more often. I had the piercing gun get stuck more than once on people, and once I had gotten my gloves stuck in a piercing, the gloves never fit right. We had barely any training. The implements were only wiped down with alcohol pads and most people bought cheap surgical steel earrings. I can't believe they are still piercing there. And now that locations are doing nose piercings, it's crazy. That's the thing. We've heard it from the horse. Is that the right word? Is that the right term? Heard it from the horse's mouth. Nobody cares. These piercing people are not properly trained. Does it, does it surprise me that, you know, they're piercing directly with cheaper jewelry? Cheaper jewelry isn't always bad. It's you just shouldn't pierce with them. Once your piercing is healed, you don't have to wear the highest, highest quality. I mean, obviously it's still, I, you would always recommend the highest, highest quality. It's not as much of a big deal. When they're healing, using cheaper jewelry on the healing piercings is never okay. You're just gonna hate it. But the fact that they only clean it with a little bit of wiping it down doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Like having to pierce babies, I'm not surprised, does not like sit well with me. And of course, I can't imagine having to do that kind of stuff. And the first, the fact that the person's like almost passing out and you, you know, your, your, your glove was stuck to a piercing gun once and like they would get stuck on the time, doesn't surprise me. These people are not trained. I find it weird that they're legally allowed to do it. Like if you go to a piercing studio, there's certificates, they have to pass exams and things. It's not like you just go, I'm gonna be a piercing now. Eh. Like no, you have to do things for it. Absolutely obscene. So let's change this higher helix piercing here. So let's do this one here. And we're going to put, let's see, I've got a few things down here. Maybe I put like another spider. I really love the spiders. So for this one, I'm gonna be putting these really cute little skeleton hands on. Now these again, one of those ones that you'll be able to see more on the side. So if you actually like look at me, talking to me, come to the side or whatever, you'll be able to see it. Don't talk to me. This is meant to be a septum piercing jewelry, but I'm gonna put it here on my helix piercing here. Cause I really like, I think it looks really cute. I guess if I actually wore it like that, you'd be able to see it a little bit more. It's so basically, it's like a little skeleton. It's like a little skeleton hands. So this is from Jade and they said, hi Riley, hello girl. I've been a fan, I've been a huge fan of yours for some years now and I have a short piercing horror story. So I got my industrial pierce when I was 15 in October of 2021. The healing was a little difficult at first as it always, as always, but it healed after 10 months. Yeah, 10 months of piercing to heal. <laughs> 10 months and it was done properly. Not even two weeks after it stopped giving me problems, I was outside playing volleyball with my family and friends and it whacked on the side of the head. So you could probably see where this is going. I went up to the net to spike the ball when my feet slipped because we were very, we were playing in grass. Long story short, I got the ball over, but when I slipped, I fell onto the net. So when I went to fall to the ground, I was hanging from the net by my industrial. That was not where I was expecting where it was going. What a twist. It was so painful and bled a lot and my dad had to untangle my ear from the net. Somehow it didn't rip through my ear. I am surprised. That is shocking. But it did slightly rip the hole bigger. Needed to say, I never worn my industrial while playing volleyball since, but it was thankfully healed and just fine then. I am so surprised that that didn't reject. Industrial piercings are so notoriously like C-U-N-T-Y for any kind of like knocking, hurting, damaging. The idea that you did that and still have it now and it didn't reject is a Astonishing to me. That must have hurt. So I couldn't even imagine how much pain that you must have been in dealing with that. Fudge. Imagine falling and like, going, oh, girls. No, 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 no. Ouch, ouch, ouchy, ouchy. Ouchy, ouchy, girls. Do you know, I've actually needed a new nose. I've needed a new nose, like, bar. The bar that I was using before, this one here, I don't know what was wrong with it, but it was really making all the piercings, like, unscrew, like, really quickly. So I've just changed, actually, my piercing bar to one that I just got today. So that's been helpful. Hopefully it won't keep falling out of my nose now. It's a bit shorter as well, so it's not sticking in my nose so much. So what I want to do with the top ones here. Now, if you remember, I had that belly, I had the nipple bar bar with the ones that are facing forward. So I have a few extra balls. So what I'm going to do is change. The ones either side here is going to be changed into a red ball. So the spike is just in the middle. And then in this center one here, there's going to be a red ball in the middle. So I'm going to do it now and then I'll show you at the end so you can see properly. So I've done it up here. So if you can kind of see again, there go. I keep saying there's going to be some nice photos at the end. But as you can see, I've got like the three there. So it's sort of like interlock to each other. I think they're just a little, they're, they're not, they're probably just a little bit too big for this precise thing. I need to like downsize some of the other balls that are like beside it. Essentially, so I've got like red ball up here, red ball here. So it's kind of like zigzags in. I want to change the bottom two for spikes. So they kind of like 
properly match. Just to show another fun little uh, horseshoe bar they do have. And it's this cute little ghost. I absolutely love this. I should have worn a different t-shirt. I thought I'd be spooky, but it's actually made it a little bit difficult to see some things. So yeah, it's a really cute little ghost um, piece of jewelry. And essentially it's, this is meant for like a septum piercing. I mean, it's one of the ones that they, they you know, the, the, the front facing, just like a little ghosty, like little spooky ghosts. There's also this other little collection, which is a bat, a spider and a pumpkin. And they're black, but they have like glitter in the middle. So it's sort of, sort of like sparkly black, which are really, 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 really cute. So this is from Caroline and they said, expensive surgery and years of pain, horror story. My first cartilage piercing was a double helix on my right ear. The piercing process itself was fine. Honestly, this is a story about how dumb I was and how little I knew about piercings. Anyway, I decided to change the jewelry only two weeks after getting it done. Oh, two weeks after your piercing, two weeks. I went to Spencer's Jewelry in the mall and bought a captive bead ring. Not knowing enough about captive rings or cartilage piercings, I took out my piercing in the bathroom at the mall. You, you couldn't even wait to get home? I proceeded to struggle with the captive bead ring because they're impossible to take apart. No, you need like an actual tool for those ones. By the time I got the bead out, I realized that the opening ring was really narrow. I squeezed it into the ear, not comprehending how it would possibly, <laughs> how I'm probably going to use the jewelry with such small opening. When I went to push the, into the hole, it went through the front skin and the cartilage was with little effort. I didn't realize that the skin had closed in the back and because the ring was so tight, when I tried to push it through the back skin, oh my God, the back skin, it instead pushed between the skin of the back and the cartilage. <laughs> I feel sick. It was one of the most painful experiences short of smashing my finger with a freeway. I didn't think that I had, but I have a picture showing that I somehow got the earring back through it eventually. I believe by re-piercing re the back skin with a safety pin. Anyway, for I think six months after that, I kept it in desperately trying not to let the infection get too bad. I eventually took it out for other reasons, but I knew it was doomed anyway. Jesus Christ. That was a, that was a, I'm um, shook to the core. Shooketh. The idea that it went through like in between the skin and the cartilage and it kind of just like sat inside your ear is absolutely shocking and disgusting to think about. Fast forward a year or so, I was no longer able to wear contacts because of how my eyes reacted to them. I started wearing glasses that pretty much constantly hit that spot on the back of my ear where the small bump had formed from the trauma I caused to my ear. It was super painful and over the next few years, no matter how many times I got new glasses, the bump grew. Eventually, it was the size of a cranberry on the back of my ear and so painful. I had to get it removed at dermatologist office because of how painful it was. Beforehand, to shrink it, she injected chemotherapy drugs. Totally safe, but also made it hurt more as it shrunk. They used a laser to kill the last bits and pre uh, prevent it from growing back. A very expensive part. And I had a huge hole in the back of my ear for a couple of months. I had to buy a, com a compression earring that hurt as well and wore it for two years to prevent from uh, from growing back. Overall, about seven, eight years of pain. Don't be a dummy, let your piercings heal before changing the jewelry. Love you really, love your cut, thank you. Yeah, that's absolutely bonkers. The fact that just from you changing the piercing a little early costs you probably thousands of dollars. Like chemo drugs aren't exactly cheap. Probably thousands of dollars because you changed it so early. Like, oh my, again, my light is just, the, the thing that holds the light up has become very loose and it's just not working anymore. And that's just, oh for God's sake, it's pathetic. But anyway, that is absolutely Barmy. I can't believe that all that happened because you changed your piercing early. You needed like cancer drugs essentially to make it to make it fix. What? Compression? By comp I've never heard of a compression earring. Well guys, this has been a lot of fun. Now this is the final look. So I've put some photos here so you can see what the final looks are on each ear. I absolutely love how these ones turned out. This is probably one of my favorite ones to do. As you know, I love spooky things. I'm very spooky and I like sort of ghosts and horror and everything. So having like a like a Halloween themed piercing jewelry, I love it. Obviously it looks a bit different at the moment. I'm gonna have a little bit of a play around, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with how I've got them. I might just like just maybe just tweak one or two little bits. This is what I, te I tend to do. I tend to do the video and then at the end, I kind of like, as I'm taking the photos, I go, oh, maybe I'll move that one here. Maybe I'll move that one here. But this is what the final look will be. And I will keep this look for a little while. So thank you so much for Alpha Body Jewelry, as always, for sponsoring this video and allowing me to try and survive. So as I said, if you use my code ROLY30 on Alpha Body Jewelry, you can get 30% off everything, not just what I've shown today, but of everything else they have on this website as well. So go over to Alpha Body Jewelry. There's all the links are down below. 
use my discount code. And you know, the discount code is working all the time. It's not just for a short amount of time. It's like constant. So if you can't afford anything now, or you want to wait or something else, that's absolutely fine. Uh, but my my code does work all the time. So Roly30, don't forget my code and um, yeah, get 30% off your jewelry. And of course, thank you so much for everyone who did send me horror stories to react to in this video. I have to actually change the title of this video because the word horror, um, is apparently like one of those words that you use in the titles that gets your videos suppressed. It also happens on Instagram and TikTok as well. So you can't use that word anymore. So well, it's one of the reasons why I kind of stopped doing this the uh, series, to be honest. But if I sort of like tweak the name a little bit, maybe we can carry it on. So if you do have any more like piercing stories, leave it down below in the comment section below. As always, I know it's been a long time now. If you haven't not, you know, if you've been posting your stories and I haven't got to them, leave them down below in this one. You're more than welcome to repost the same story. And if this video does really well, I will, I will you know, make some more of the these videos. I'd like to count doing the tattoo version as well. So, you know, let me know about if you want me to keep doing these videos. Today's Instagram shout out goes to Raspberry Honey Girls, Miss Honey. Don't you hear me calling you Miss Honey? Thank you for following me over on Instagram. So come follow me on Instagram and maybe you could be in the next Instagram shout out. And as always, yeah, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of videos that are coming up. And of course, of course, you can scan this QR code on screen if you're watching on a telephone. Te on a Telephone. If you're watching on a tele, if you're watching on a TV, use your phone. Tell what year is this? Hello, telephone. Yeah, hello, telephone. Me, girls. I'm out to my lovely patrons. Hello, thanks to me, Patreon. John. And an extra special shout out to my top tier patrons: ASS Guardians, Kimmy H, Bumblebee Whisperer, Blue Gem, TNS Mum, Adam Brett Batch, Kelly Rose, Nova, Cameron Pittman, Rishi, Athena Falling, Angel Barrington, Erin Grace, Benjamin Baker. I A, Robin Scott Palmer, Bethard, Steph Utek, Chloe Louise, Katty H, Shell Herman. <laughs> And Kelly Bowser, thanks for following me on Patreon and being a top tier patrons. Delicious. Patreon link down below. Squat for Jesus. We can't squat because I'm, I'm sitting down. Oh, stand for Jesus. Jesus love to go pegging. Bye.